What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time bringing you my first impressions of Dying Light. So if you're new to the channel, I like to review video games, but I usually do it after 100%, which means a lot of things, and as a result, I usually like to release these first impressions videos when I start up a new title that I haven't played before. And while I typically cover a lot of CRPGs and just deeper RPGs in general, Every once in a while, I like to do something a little bit different, and that's what we're doing with Dying Light, trying to get ahead of it before its sequels release here soon. So as I'm sure most of the people watching this are probably aware, Dying Light is a sort of zombie survival game in which you play as an undercover agent, Kyle Crane, who is dropped into a Middle Eastern city known as Haran. So right out of the gate there, there's a bit of a mystery about everything going on with your protagonist, exactly what the relationship is with this employer, it would seem. But nonetheless, we're kind of sent in, we wind up ingratiating ourselves with kind of the local command, if you will, known as the tower. And you can kind of quickly get to work, attempting to track down a specific person. Now, at the beginning of the game, we're given a little bit of information about the zombie apocalypse itself, and that it is seemingly some sort of virus outbreak, specifically in this city. And the city has been quarantined off, with governments and everything deciding exactly what they're going to do about this place. Now, obviously, I could look up the specifics if I wanted to, but I'm looking forward to learning more about this as I play through the actual game, so I have refrained from doing that. But the game itself sees us running from zombies in a sort of free-running parkour style, as well as occasionally fighting those zombies. Now, when it comes to combat, individually, at least during the daytime, none of these zombies are particularly dangerous. There's just a lot of them. They're usually pretty easy to kill, but noise attracts them, so you're pretty much limited to melee weapons, though I understand guns are available later in the game. But the melee weapons require you to get close to usually big clumps of zombies. And while they are definitely not dangerous individually, all grouped up, they can easily swarm you. But you're given a lot of methods to redirect their attention, etc. So, so far, I have not found the combat particularly challenging. And judging by the skill trees and stuff, and I assume different types of zombies, I'm sure, are probably going to be cropping up eventually, and especially at nighttime, when the more dangerous zombies come out, I'll be able to put more use into all the various combat skills, but we'll kind of see how that goes. But so far, the combat itself is decent enough. I like kind of how the dynamic of all that works. And then the skill system I'm actually the most intrigued about, which, as someone who really loves RPGs, isn't much of a surprise. But you have four different skill trees, and you level each of them up in different ways, which I found especially interesting. Because there is an experience bar for combat, there's an experience bar for your parkour antics, there's your survivor rank, which is basically just your XP you get for completing missions and things, etc, etc. And then each of these has their own skill tree that you get to mess around with. And so far, I've liked that a lot. Now, when it comes to the parkour, it's definitely a really cool concept. I haven't seen anything exactly like that in games that I've personally played, though I am aware that there are like parkour style games out there. I just personally haven't played them, so playing a game that those are in is definitely interesting to me. I will say that at the beginning of the game here, at least, I'm pretty bad at it. I imagine I'll get better at it as the game progresses. And then the crafting system itself is also really cool. I like how robust it is. It's definitely useful. Just like right out of the gate, I'm able to craft things that are useful, like lockpicks, molotovs, med kits, etc. So I definitely get the impression that crafting is a huge part of this game. And one more thing I did want to mention for this impressions thing before we kind of wrap it up and save some stuff for the review. The voice acting specifically for the protagonist is really weird. Like, it's not bad, but some of it comes off really flat. For instance, in one of the very early side missions, you're basically telling off this guy who's selling bad medicine. And the line is just delivered like you're talking to like an unruly 12-year-old or something. It's like the most mild tough talk in the world, which struck me as really odd. But in terms of the actual gameplay, I am having fun so far, and I'm looking forward to spending the time on 100%ing this thing, which includes quite a bit of DLC, actually. And during the Steam Winter Sale, I was actually able to pick this game and almost all of its DLC up for like $10, which I thought was a really great deal, which is a big part of why I'm checking it out before the launch of the second one. But there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed the first impressions. I'm not exactly sure how long this game is going to take. It's a little outside of my wheelhouse. And honestly, I'm just super busy over the next week or two with some personal stuff. So this game is likely to take me much longer than my usuals. But nonetheless, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.